Hear that? Believe it or not, summer is just around the corner. Luckily, Armor All, America's most trusted auto appearance brand, has what your car needs to get that perfect summer shine. Plus, now through May 31st, we'll give you $5 for every $20 you spend on Armor All products. That means car wash pods, protectant, tire shine, you name it. Find out how to get your $5 rebate at ArmorAll.com. Armor All, less work, more clean. Terms apply. I have another child. I call her my daughter. That's how close we are. I've been in her life since she was born. With that being said, I take her everywhere. As many times as I can, as often as I can, that's how close knit we are. This trip to that's Hawaii. That's so nice. I wish it just ended right there. Yeah. It, it would have. I mean, I, can I tell you? It was you? so perfect. I would have felt so good. This is the plaintiff, Tanya Graham. She says she and the defendant have a son together, and he has a daughter from another woman. In the summer of 2012, she was going to take her son and the defendant's daughter on a cruise to Hawaii. The defendant was supposed to reimburse her for his daughter's portion, but hasn't. And here they are in the People's Court. She's suing for $1,623.39, the defendant's daughter's portion of the trip. This is the defendant, William Wells. He says he paid the plaintiff 1,900 bucks for the trip because their deal was he would help her pay as much as he could. He never agreed to pay an exact amount. After all, this was a trip she planned, she went on and enjoyed, and he's given her more than his fair share of money for it. He's accused of hitting rough seas with an ex. All parties, please raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn. Thank you. You got it. Tanya Graham? Yes, ma'am. You are suing the father of your son, William Wells, for $1,623.39 that you say he still owes you for a vacation he was supposed to pay for for his child. That's correct. Okay. Not the child you share together, but his child with another woman. Yes, ma'am. All righty. Tell me what happened. Um, Your Honor, uh, I belong to a travel group. Um, In 2012... What's a travel group? Uh, we organize getaways, okay. uh, cruises, inclusive trips, uh, bus rides, anything. So every year we get a breakdown to do a cruise for the following year. Um, just to give a little history about me and a defendant, we have a son together. He's 21 now. He has a daughter from a, another relationship. He has a daughter. You're, you're, My, the defendant okay. has a daughter from a, another relationship after me. Okay. Um, we broke up not too long after my son was born, but we've remained great co-parenting unit. That's great. We do. We con- communicate perfectly. He has never done anything um, to disown or neglect his child. Nothing to that. So when he had a daughter, my son grew up with his daughter, um, his with sister. His, which your is his, son grew up with his sister. Correct. Okay. So everything was the same. My son would go to his house on the weekends. He saw his father every weekend. His daughters come to my house. It's almost like I have another child. I call her my daughter. That's how close we are. I've been in her life since she was born. With that being said, I take her everywhere. As many times as I can, as often as I can. That's how close knit we are. This trip to That's Hawaii. so nice. I wish it just ended right there. Yeah. It would have. I mean, I, can I tell it you? It was so perfect. I would have felt so good. Your Honor, I couldn't so tell you fuzzy. in a billion years that I would ever think I would go through this with the defendant. That's how close we were. Okay. Um, in any event, um, we planned the trip for 2012. I explained to him I could not afford to take me, my son, and her. But I told him I couldn't afford to do all three of us. It was Hawaii. So it was Hawaii and then a cruise from Hawaii. It was. We flew to Honolulu and then we cruised eight days. Um, and it was it was going to be great. He agreed. Not he agreed a to what? He agreed to pay for her portion of the trip. How much was her portion of the trip? It was the eighteen thirty five plus the airfare. The eighteen thirty five was for the cruise. Was for the cruise entirety. And the airfare. I was able to get the airfare for nine sixty five. Did he approve that? Yes, he did. Okay. 
So go on. So um, everything was going fine. He was making monthly payments up until July of 2013. And that was because he lost his job. We, at the time, we kind of sidetracked off of the trip and concentrated on his, his unemployment and were You talking. concentrated on his unemployment? I did. I really did. Like, meaning what? what I did mean, you do? like, I was um, asking him, well, were you looking here? I'm looking at job postings. I'm emailing him places. I signed him up. <laughs> I signed him up to a Facebook group for retired MTA workers called Getting People Back to Work. I signed him up to that group because... What, are you with somebody now? Yes. Me? Yeah, I've been with the same woman for, for all that time, 20 right? years. Yeah. All that time. And she, how do you two get along? We're fit. We're great. <laughs> we're great. I wish she was here. <laughs> I would I like to get the full experience. We're great. I, do, I, I know people. I have a cousin like this, and I think it's, it's so kind to the children. Yes. To be able to have holidays together and stuff now. like that. It's so incredibly sensitive to the children. But it takes a special kind of people. Both both sides have to be really special kind of people to be able to, what, both sides, and her. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're present because she's, she's, you know. Okay, but then there's more. But wait, there's more. Yes, so there he is loses more. his job. You're concentrating. You're not hounding him for the money. No. You're con okay, and then what happens? So um, as July into August, we're talking about his uh, unemployment. He filed for unemployment. We were waiting for it to kick in. By August, August to September, I asked him, well, what are we going to do about Jelani's trip? The, the child is Jelani. What are we gonna do about Jelani's trip? Do you still want her to go? Well, let me get through this unemployment. We're, we're still gonna work it out. I don't wanna cancel her trip. Did you go back to work? I went back to work in August of 2014, but we hadn't spoken. There was no communication whatsoever once I started back to work. Why? Um, I, I just felt that the whole time I was out of work and the whole time I was going through what I was going through, there was, there was no moral support. There was nothing. And okay, so was, did you feel like maybe she should say, I got this one once you were unemployed? Yeah. I kind of think that's what you think. Yeah. I think you have come to expect a lot out of your good relationship with your ex. No, I don't, I don't think that's it at all. Um, I mean, how when, could that when be? When I stopped working in July and we had that discussion and she asked me what I was going to do, told her I don't know. Well, what you should have done is cancel it if you couldn't keep paying it. Well, that was her choice. She could have canceled it. No, no, no. It. No, 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 no. You don't tell me that she, you know, you tried to cancel and she didn't. That's not what you're no, saying. No, I, I didn't say right. I tried did to cancel. Did you want your daughter to not go on the cruise? I did want her to go okay. on the cruise. Okay, and you do understand that's your daughter from a different union, right? That that's not yeah. her daughter. Exactly. Okay. Just want to make sure everybody gets, I mean, I understand that she calls her my daughter and, and mm -hmm. how does your, how does, how does the mother of that child feel about that? No problem. no problem. When she calls me, she says, I'm calling about your daughter. It's, it's okay. not a problem. I, listen carefully to me. I love you people, and I want to be in your lives. Like, so that, that's what I want now. I, I, it's like, but, but Mr. Wells, I, I, I'm kind of disappointed in, in this and the fact that, that you end up here on something like this. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. Is it generally possible for two people who break up to still be close and friendly for the sake of the kids? Yes. And because for the children, you will make your own relationship work. It's a great theory. Do you think it happens in practice? Uh, I think yes, if they consider taking care of their children and keep it. Um, okay. So why do people fight so much after they get divorced, when, even when there are kids involved? Well, when you break up a bond, I mean, people are going to have an animosity, and that animosity is, is relevant to kids. I mean, the kids see animosity. Fair enough. Going inside the courtroom. You know, it's one thing if you said to her, I've been going through trouble, and you should have let me pay you a, a smaller amount, you know, but, and then worked it out. But you just he just stopped paying and then said, I'm not going to pay you anymore? I didn't just stop paying. I lost my job. There was nothing. No, I no, could... you paid without a job for many months after you oh, didn't have a job. Oh, with my unemployment until it ran out. Right. And then why don't you have a conversation with the person you owe $300 every other month to? My phone got cut off. <laughs> How are your fingers doing? My fingers are fine. So maybe you could, I would guess that I could reach three feet and touch someone's phone these days. Of course. Base, okay, so you could have called her, right? Yeah, Come on, I, Mr. Wells, you're disappointing me. You have like a great thing going where she takes your daughter. This is good for your son that you share too because your son has a sibling who's, you know, best friend cradle to grave. 
You know, when you two are old and, and decrepit, you those two kids will, can rely on each other to help out, and, and, and your daughter will be helping her out, and the, it's, it's, and the son will be helping your, I don't know if she's your wife or your girlfriend out, too. No, I mean, this is like the there best. There is no more relationship between the son and anymore. With you and your son? No. Why? Because of this? Yes. Okay, now I'm really mad. Mm -hmm. You have allowed, how much money's left? I have 965 for the airfare, and the remainder of the cruise he didn't pay was the 658.39. Over $1,600, you lost your son and one of your close friends? I, I didn't lose them. When I was going through that Can I just ask you a question, sure. seriously? You had to do this to her and then lose your son? Apparently the price wasn't only losing her, which I thought was bad enough. So your son has not spoken to him in how long? Uh, my son hasn't spoken to him since February 5th. He texted him for his birthday. Um, his birthday was Who February. texted who? My son texted his father for his birthday um, to say happy birthday and see how he was doing and should he come by. And his father's response was he was at work, don't come by. So he hasn't spoken to him since then. No, you may not. Sometimes money costs too much. And this is one of those times. I am ordering you to pay $1,623.39 to the plaintiff. It boggles the imagination that you have let it get this far and that you would not have spoken to your son when you hear, I don't know what you think was going on, but when you hear what she just said, that your son feels that when he calls you, you brush him off, that's, that better be moving something inside of you. Very disappointed in you, Mr. Wells. Good luck, folks. Thank you, Anna. So after losing this case, the defendant, uh, the judge is very disappointed in you. You just heard her say that, her last words before leaving the bench. Um, it's not true. What? Not true, though. He, he's reaching out to me, so they say, but I've seen him multiple times, and he had nothing to say to me. Well, do you regret letting this money issue become uh, something that interfered with your family relationships? I didn't, I didn't let it come that way, so. Well, what fine. are you saying? What do you have to say about it? Nothing. All right, head right down there then. What is that? I've been trying to figure it out for the longest. We've never had a barrier. We've always had good communication. It wasn't until he lost his job and he couldn't pay anymore that everything stopped. It's like, I'm no longer family. I'm no longer a friend. Everything that we've gone through for the past 20 years went to nothing after he lost his job. And, and I guess that's where he wants it to stay. I can't really make heads pride's of a, it. Pride's a good guess. And it's costly, too. Harvey? You know, I got to say, this is really a sad case. It sounds like the animosity between the adults have really made the son suffer. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Georgia Wright. He says he bought a car from the defendant, but could never get the proper title for the car, so he couldn't legally register it. He isn't stupid, so he left the car on the defendant's lot while he waited for the title, but got one run around after another for months. Now the defendant wants to charge him for storage fees? Is he crazy or something? He just wants the $2,126 he paid for the car returned, and he'll be on his merry way. This is the defendant, Alan Schneider. He says the guy buys this car, pays him, and then says he can't take possession of the car for another three months. What's he supposed to do, store the car for him free of charge? It's stipulated in their agreement that if the buyer doesn't take possession of the car in 14 days, then he can charge $50 a day storage, and that's just what he did. He's accused of having trouble finding a title. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $1,788.62, the amount he's owed for 46 days of storage. All parties, please raise your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the dock, the plaintiff bought a car from the defendant, but says that it was fatally All flawed right. because the title was bad. The but the defendant says the plaintiff made him store the car for months, and he wants 50 bucks a day for storage. It's the case of, here's what's in store for you. Thank you, Douglas. George? Yes. How do I pronounce your last name? It's Georgia Reut. Reut. Yes. You, Mr. Reut, you're suing Mr. Schneider, okay? That is correct. For $2,126, the amount that you paid for a BMW that you, he did not 
allow you to have, and you have a counterclaim against him for $1,788.62 for storage and the cost to rekey the car. Okay, what happened? Well, I bought the car of last year of November 14, but uh, I want to beat on eBay for $2,026. Okay, and this is for a 1991 BMW, BMW 850. 850, yes. And then I was required to So the total amount was how much? 2000 126 2000 no 26 dollars 2026 dollars Yes but 100 dollars there was for me cost because I was going back and forth they're going to the police to try oh, to make a okay. police so report 2026 dollars was a purchase price okay yes. And um, I was required to put a 500 dollar deposit on uh, with PayPal I did that and then he said that you have to come with the rest of the money within 24 hours otherwise you're going to lose the 500 dollar deposit that you you, you put so basically, the next day, I made a, a payment of $500 on PayPal. And then the next day, I left early from work to go and uh, give the refs of the money. So when I was there, I called Mr. Allen. And he says, well, I'm not in town. I'm in Pennsylvania. Well, I'm in, he said that he's, he's not in New York. There was, uh, he, he gave so did me he the authorize name. you to leave the money with somebody at the business? Yes, yes. Did you do that? Yes, I did that. Okay. There, is there any dispute about that or no? No dispute, All right, Your Honor. so then what happens? Did you take the car? No, I didn't take the car. Why didn't you take the car? I had no papers. Oh, there, there were was no, no papers because he wasn't in town? Nothing, yeah. And he didn't leave a title behind? No. You didn't leave a signed title for him? At the, 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 the answer to the question, no. The answer for that, the reason for that, was that the auction stipulated when he originally contracted with eBay to pay within 24 hours the $500 deposit. Right. Within three days, he was supposed to pay the balance. Right. It took him about three days to pay the initial $500 deposit and about seven days to pay the balance. But you accepted it? We accepted it okay, with my agent. Okay, so that's agent. done. So then that's why doesn't he have the car? What happened? He then indicated to the person uh, who I authorized the car to be there with, his name was Richard, he said he could not remove the vehicle off the premises. For that he couldn't? He could not. George Roy could not remove the vehicle off the premises for two to three months. His mechanic was not able to take okay. delivery you on the vehicle. You deny having said that? No. What I told him, I cannot pick it up right now, but I said, when I get the, the papers for the car, of course I could pick it up. But how can I pick up the car with no papers. Right. So then when you get back I, into town, don't you just clear exactly. this up, sign the papers, and he takes the car? The actual provision of the auction, payment, constructions, was that when he completes this, everything is paid, and he takes the vehicle away, and he's able to take the vehicle away, that's when the title would be actually... That's the silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. Why would any... First of all, I wouldn't pay anybody who wasn't handing me a title. I wouldn't do it. But, you know, you, I guess you got a really good price, and you probably got a better price from the next guy and kept his money. Is that what happened? Did you sell this car again? I sold it 45 days later. Exactly. How much did you sell it for? Uh, props, let's say probably about 20. Why is a guy going to take the car off your premises without a title? He needs the title. That's part of the sale. He and was, show me where it says, by the way, you got to drive off, and then somehow mysteriously we'll meet again, and you'll get a title. Tell oh, me where it says me, that. I'm going to show now, it to you right now. Yeah, show it to me right now. Hand it to my bailiff. But the vehicle is not drivable, Your Honor. That's the problem. The vehicle was a uh, Even vehicle. less. I'm going to pay money to tow the car when I don't even know if you have a title? All right, give me a second to look through this. Seller's payment instruction. Where does it say, and then you get a title later? No, title will be conveyed when delivery arrangements have been made. I think it's in there. All financial disbursements must be clear before title is conveyed. You brought cash? Yes. Then, what, then, that, then the financial disbursement is clear. There's no checks to clear. There's nothing else. You said to me, it's right in the instructions about... I, I don't have to convey title till he takes it off my property, and that's not what this says. So now that we've established that that's not true, tell me why you, unlike every other vehicle conveying seller on the planet, do not have to sign a title and hand it over to the man. So now you've kept his $2,026, and then you sold it to somebody else for how much? Uh, I think $2,300, $2,400. So you've made $4,300 off of salvage? It's not bad for you, right? If you can, not, not bad business if you can get it. If you can rook people like that, well, it's I'm pretty not, good for I'm everybody. Not, I'm not well, naturally, it's not good for you. It's not good for me because it's raising my blood pressure, but it's awesome for you because you get to sell the car twice. How do you justify what you're saying? Do you have any proof? Show me some proof. Yes. Show me proof that the man said to you, I got to store it there for, and not only that, you have the hubris to have a counterclaim against him for $1,788 for storage 46 days of storage according to you you're trying to get the car all this time no. how are you trying to get what's going on no what happened i said because i went to the police station to try to make a police report when did you do that um 
I, when I tried to call him, he gave me a running around. What would time. he say to you? He asked me, what time do you finish work? What are you doing? He goes, like, You're looking for texts that have to do with this case, one, right? Yes, and I'm trying oh, to get a okay. voicemail record. One, okay. you hear or two o'clock in the morning, he says. When you finish work, come to Long Island so I, I could give you the title. You call me one o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning to go on and get the title for the car? You know. So then I went to the police station. Police said Wait, that, wait. Did, at some point, did he tell you, okay, time's up? Or did you say, that's it, I've, I've, I'm done with this runway? Yeah, I'm done because I said, he said- how long, after, how long after you gave them the cash did you say, that's it, I'm done? The most, I would say up to two weeks, the two most. Weeks. All right, and then did you, are you a texter? Do you text? Yes, I, I okay. text. Okay, do you have your phone that shows the text? No, I don't have the phone. Okay, no. you do though, right? Yes. Let me see it. Okay, let me get that. Recently. So you're suing him for $274 in storage and then $1,514.62 cost to recar the key? Rekey the car. Rekey, I mean, he, rekey he would the not, car. Why? He would not give me the keys back so I could resell it. How can I give you the key back when the what? car belongs to me? It's my car. I pay <laughs> Show for me it. the text. Show me the text. <laughs> <laughs> well, he could have easily told you. Just her. show me the tax. <laughs> I don't get how when a guy has paid you in full for a car, you don't make yourself available. I was available, and I made myself available. Two o'clock like in the morning, Okay, yes, so that's right. fine. At two o'clock in the morning, is he right? Was it no, he's not right. Okay, so let's see the text, because the text will give me the flavor. He couldn't make Make it sure he's not erasing anything? Right, okay. I'm not erasing. I know, that's why he's standing look, right next to you right on your by elbow. My side, sir. We, this is not my first rodeo. I like that, good. Okay. You can look at the whole string you're on. I am. Beginning. It's what I do. Please it's what do I it. live for. Uh, you can, she can go scroll through it. Yeah, and it's I what sent I do. him a copy of the title, everything. We had an appointment. He said it was raining. Okay. He couldn't Stop make talking. it. Stop talking. Stop talking. Did you leave him a message on 1122 on eBay? Uh, I don't I, Maybe. He says, he texts you. You say you left me message on eBay. Where is the title of the car? Yes. He yes. answers, with me and my person. You say, what do you mean? <laughs> I told you that I had to make sure of where to sign it, and now that I have that worked out, you can have the document when you pick up the car. We made an appointment at the Colony Diner, Your Honor, which he failed to show up for. I think that you'll see in the text. It was the, two o'clock in the morning to come to the diner. Wait, did you make you? an appointment to come at two o'clock in the morning? I said, how can I go to a Did you in the make morning? an appointment to come at two o'clock? Yeah, so I didn't Did, make an appointment. Is that a yes? You made no, an appointment no. to come or no? He told me to come one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning. And then I started That's thinking. That's not an appointment. Said, did you make an appointment? No, no. Okay, and you say I'm going to see evidence that he did. What time do you finish work tomorrow night? 1 a.m. Text me when you leave work and I will give you the exact address. And you say, okay. So you had a one o'clock appointment at the Colony Diner. <laughs> 1 a.m. appointment. One o'clock in the morning. And I that? don't care. I I wouldn't have made it. You made it. That doesn't mean you get to go, <laughs> who would make that appointment? You made it. <laughs> December 8th. Hi, alien. Where are you? And you say, I'm in Connecticut. What happened Saturday night? You never showed up. I was waiting for you at the diner like we said. I was too much rain. When do you come back? How much are you offering to pay the storage charges? Because now it's almost a month. Ooh, that's sassy. I mean, the problem, he hasn't given you the title because you guys can't meet up. So would you buy a car for a great price at an auction, great price, if it didn't have title? No. Why? Because you can never register it and you can, it's never gonna be street worthy. Fair enough, but I mean, aren't there ways of getting a title? I mean, would you, would, great price, like the best price you can imagine, no title, would you do it? No, I wouldn't. Because you can't drive here in LA if you don't have a title. Or New York or any other yeah, place. Yeah. And you know what? Smart man, smart woman. I'm serious. Do not do that going inside the courtroom. When did you sell the car? Oh, December 31st. Okay, so. And he now, told me to sell it to another person. I didn't want to sell it. We haven't gotten there yet. I'm okay. in the text where you say to him, I need to know how much money you're giving me before we release the title. According to my email, you now owe $750 at $50 a day. But you'd never said that before then. So what was it that made you say this? Is that they, he just he, pissed you off leaving no. you in the diner at 1 a.m.? Let me tell you something. I, I happen to like this gentleman in the beginning so of the transaction. So why would you say something like this that, instead of why. just getting rid of the car and giving him the title? And then it isn't until you have a 1 o'clock in the morning appointment that he doesn't make it because he claims that it's raining and he leaves you hanging there, which I think is intensely Rude, that you for the first time bring up the storage charges. All right. <laughs> we had previous conversations, Your Honor. Oh, we, I don't see that anywhere here. So he says, okay, so you want 750 more from me. I see you like to play games with me. No problem, my, my fiend, my friend. <laughs> no games, you say. Then make an appointment that you will keep. It is that. All of a sudden now you're, you're going to charge him storage because you got pissed off that he didn't make the appointment. Hey, Al, I am oh. tired of these. Just want you to return my money. George, I am in receipt of your lawsuit. Please drop the keys. On January 5th, you tell him drop the keys 
to the car in question between 9 and 6.30. If you do not return the keys, I will be forced to hire a professional auto locksmith to rekey the ignition, door, and trunk locks. And the price for doing that will be well over $1,000. When I see you in court, then we will talk. Okay. So in looking through all of these texts, here's a flavor of what I see. The two of you are trying to make an appointment, and what happens is... You make a plan, which you agreed to, at one in the morning. And why didn't you meet him there? Because it was, it was raining very hard. Was okay, a, but you didn't even call the guy to tell him, hey, it's raining too hard, I can't Did he make call it. me? Why should he have to call you? He's sitting there at the appointed time you know, he, that you he made the appointment. He could have texted me like half an hour before. He says, George, I'm here. I'm, I'm waiting for you. You know he's there. You made an appointment. I'm reading how, the text. How come I know it? he's there? Because, because I, you made an appointment for one o'clock for to be there. And you know that you made an appointment and you know you weren't there. And then if you know you're not showing up, you could have the decency, because we wouldn't be here if you did have the decency, to text a guy and say, listen, I'm really sorry. It's pouring down rain, and I can't make it there. I don't want you waiting there for nothing. And that's when he then plays Kenneth Mas Macho with you and decides that you have to pay storage charges. Initially, did you actually yes. pay $1,514.62 to rekey the car? Absolutely. Let I me see the proof. So wouldn't it make more business sense? You're a businessman. Yes, wouldn't I am. it make more business sense to just get this guy out of your hair and pay him back his money because you're going to resell it. You have it resold to the next guy and then get the keys in any event. So you paid somebody one thousand five hundred and fourteen dollars and forty two cents. Can you show me the canceled check? Oh, I paid him cash. Really? Why would you pay? What did you yes. what did the other guy buy it for? Twenty like twenty four, twenty five hundred dollars. OK, so you want me to believe that you paid $1,500 in order to sell it for $2,400. That's what's well, going it's, on. It's a positive. OK. So here's what we have, folks. So everything is fine until December 8th. And then you stand him up, which was rude as can be. It's all about him being rude. Both of you had so many opportunities to take it down a notch. And you wouldn't have had to pay $1,500 if you had said to him, meet me in my office. I will have your money, and you will give me my key. So yeah, I'm going to order you to return to the plaintiff $2,026, the entire amount that he paid you. You don't get $100 for being bothered. Your counterclaim against him is for $1,788.62 for storage and the cost to rekey the car because of everything I've just explained. It's zero on the counterclaim. That's my judgment. Good luck, Thank folks. No, you can have the keys, John. <laughs> it is the keys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there it is. This case winds up like that. What, what are you What are you thinking coming out? Well, you know, we had a contract, and the plaintiff, in my opinion, did actually, you know, he basically violated the contract and breached it. Uh, well, the judge didn't feel that way. Yeah, well, you heard what happened in court. Uh, well, you should have made a better deal with him. Well, I would agree with that, but it wasn't easy with this plaintiff. It was very difficult. It would have worked out better for you had you done that. All right, head, head right around the corner this way. All right, step on in here. And, and what was that you handed over at the end of the, oh, when the case the, ended right the, there? The keys from the car. Yeah, the keys. The keys from the car. Somebody finally gets the keys. Yes, right. of course. Because okay. I, I made that offer before. I said, Alan, better give me back my money. I give you the keys. It's not a problem, you know. Yeah, but you don't show up. Oh, not, not, not one o'clock. I started thinking one o'clock in the morning. I mean, I, something, I, I knew what something time? was wrong. What time's convenient for you? 12 midnight? No. <laughs> How about said, 11 p.m.? It's, it's not good. I told him Saturday, Sundays, whenever on the free days and weekend right. days right. I could come and... All right. Harvey? So the truism here, Kurt, is that you never ever buy anything, uh, whether it's a car with title or anything else, unless you have clear right of ownership. Do not get suckered into something where there is not clear right of ownership. That will do it for this case. Litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom, right now. This is the plaintiff, John Naperkowski. He says he rented an apartment with an outdoor deck. And when he moved into the place, the deck was knocked down and gone. And it took the defendant nine months to build a new one. The defendant was a nightmare landlord who made up rules as he went along. He moved out and is suing the louse for the $5,000 he is definitely owed. This is the defendant, Raphael Uyola. He says he told the plaintiff the deck was being replaced before he moved in. The plaintiff still owes him rent, and he has some nerve taking him to court today. He's pretty darn sure the judge is going to toss this clown out of her courtroom, and he's going to be elated when he leaves the victor. He's accused of rubbing a renter the wrong way.
All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff rented an apartment with an outdoor deck, or so he thought, it was knocked down. But the defendant says the plaintiff knew the deck was going. It's the case of, what a deck. Thank you, Douglas. John and Laura Naparkowski, you're representing both you and, is that your wife? Yes. Okay. You are suing Rafael Ulloa for uh, $5,000, 2500 of it in rental rebate that you believe you should get as a result of there being no deck. Right. And we'll talk about that in a second. And 2500 for moving expenses because you had to move because there was no deck. All right. Or you had to move back to Florida because there was no deck. I'm dying for you to make sense of that. Go ahead. Talk to me. Tell me what happened. Okay. Well, in July 2013, uh, I drove up uh, from Florida to Yonkers to look at the apartment. Looked at it. Uh, my wife wasn't with me, so I called her from the, the apartment. I said, uh, th this house is okay, you know, but it has a deck, and the landlord agreed to let my wife use a parking space in the driveway. So we decided to take it. Okay, uh, what were you coming to Yonkers for? Well, we have friends. My daughter's up there in Yonkers okay. in the Port so you wanted like a, it's kind of a vacation pad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you're renting the place out, and how much are you paying in rent? 2500 a month. Okay, and according to you, when you see it, there's a deck. Right. And it isn't until you move in that you hear for the first time that the deck is going to be replaced. August 16th, we moved in, we went upstairs, and we see the sliding glass door barricaded, and there's no deck. Um, explain to me how this place is. You say it's an apartment, but it sounds like a townhouse or a It's duplex. a two-family. Two a two-family. And then who lives in the other part of it? He lives in the middle he floor. He does. I live here. Okay. All right. And is the, so is the deck on an upstairs? Yeah. Okay. All right. And when, when you get there, you realize the deck has been completely ripped out? Yeah. And according to you, you never knew that that was going to happen? It nope. had never been discussed before you no, rented I wouldn't apartment. have taken the apartment. That was the main reason we took the apartment, because we liked, I had ordered a grill and, and a couple of chairs to sit outside. According to you, you told them from the beginning you will have no deck? I didn't tell that, I, uh, Your Honor, I didn't tell that, I, that we're going to have no deck. I told him we're going to replace the deck. When did you tell him that? Uh, when he saw the apartment, I told him, we're going to have a nice deck. We're going to take, knock this one down. This is wood. So we're going to have concrete. And, uh, and he said, oh, okay. Okay. And, and now well, he claimed that But the I problem was, okay, he says you didn't tell him that. No, but let's assume true. that you did. All right. When was the deck completed? Well, uh, it was a big problem with the contractor. Uh, the contractor was taking all his time, which I was very upset about it. He knew. And he also was upset, and I told him, go and tell the contractor. I already told him. Well, yeah, but, you know, and, there's and, a saying, and, okay, and I know this because I come from a contracting family. Cheap, fast, good. Pick two. <laughs> okay? You can't have all three. We're talking about nine months, right? Yeah, probably took about eight, eight or nine Yeah, months. that's yeah. a really long time. It, it was. But, all right, but, so for nine months, the guy didn't have, well, do it your way, a concrete patio. And nine months, of course, is not a reasonable time, right? Well, well, I expected myself to be completely. No, I know. Because, because I want this thing to be finished. I don't want all this dust on my house. No, I understand. So you then know? what happens? He doesn't finish it. To You move in what month? August. August 16th, we moved in. Of what year? 2013. Okay. And it's completed when? April 15th. Does that sound right? Well, that sound right. All right. And right. then when do you decide? You uh, Until April 15th, you were paying your rent complete, yep. right? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, and you stay until when? When do you move out? July 30th. Did he pay June rent? Yes, he did oh, pay he did. July rent. And yes. then July rent, he lived out his security? Yes. All right, so now, let me ask you, how do you figure he owes you five grand? 2,500 is what you figure he owes you that you never asked for, never oh, asked no, for a well, rebate uh, until the end of no, your lease I, once you were moving. I told him many times that I don't like paying for something I don't have use of. In October, when I was up there, 2013, he pleaded with me to go speak to the, 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 the construction guy. And I said, hey, that's your problem, not my problem. Yeah, I agree. But I did anyway, because I went there and I asked the guy, I said, this is going to be done by the end of October? He said, no. I told him <laughs> and I told the landlord, I'm going to get in touch with my attorney. In May, I sent them a letter, a certified letter. Yeah, I know. Once you had already were already moving, what, what, what propelled you to three, move? There was three parts of that. Once what, what made you move? Well, then he started to come up with all the way after we moved in. A couple of days after we moved in, he started with all these rules. Like what? Uh, we had to take our shoes off when we came in downstairs because he didn't want anything dirty. And he you mean want... the common hallway between the two? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And what do you say to that? Did that come up for the first time after he's living there? Because, like, if you made me take off my shoes downstairs, I might not like that. So, okay, the plaintiff thinks he's getting a deck, say, but the deck's gone when he moves in. Is that grounds to end the lease? Yes. Why? Entertainment. Oh, yeah, but he gets, he still has the apartment. No. Yes, he does. Well, yeah, but 
I wouldn't take it because I would buy it for probably depending on the size of it. It's a nice deck. It's a nice deck. Um, ground stay in the lease? I don't think so. I think the price should be readjusted because having a deck does add value, but I don't think the lease should be ended. It's not It's not a big enough thing. You're the tiebreaker. Uh, yes, it's a big Fair enough. Fair enough. Going inside the courtroom. Well, uh, we want to be clean. My, my wife Yeah, I know, is, but is that something that came up later? No, no, no. Every, every rule is everything I told them in the beginning. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm going to make you take your shoes off every time you didn't No, 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 no. All right, let's stop, 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 stop. And so you, I, I agree with you that you're entitled to something for the lack of the deck because I believe that even if I go by his theory, which is that he discussed it with you that it was going to be a new deck, even if I go by his theory, you're still entitled to something. Maybe not what you're asking for. Tell me why he has to pay your moving expenses. $2,500 of moving expenses. Well, you know, we wouldn't have moved if... The, uh, you you know, wouldn't have moved to Yonkers if there wasn't a deck? No, no. no okay. No, no we finished. <laughs> if he agreed to, to rebate me some of the money for the, the, the deck and stop with all these rules, we would have stayed there. What other rules did he, did he put on you? Uh, when we first moved in, we had a problem with the, one of the toilets in the master bedroom. And so we called him up, and he told us that in the future, only use three sheets of toilet paper because he didn't want it to clog the toilet. Did he, did he say that, or did yes, he say no, don't to use a big wad no, of toilet no. clogs? Of, he okay. told me to use three sheets of toilet paper. Did you tell him to use three sheets? No. How do you know how many sheets of toilet paper their particular body takes? Like, how, how does that, like, you know, what did you I, say to him? I just told him, listen, the new house somehow I built with a small pipe. Don't put a lot of paper in it because that's going to happen. Did you discuss this number of sheets? No. <laughs> 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 Where did you end up moving? Back to Florida? You moved all your stuff back down to Florida and you no longer kept an apartment in Yonkers? Uh, we, what we do now is uh, we stay, my wife comes up, she'll stay with uh, our daughter in Port Chester. No, we use a spare bedroom that she has. That she always had even when you rented this place? Yeah. Yeah, okay. the problem is that she has a, a, a big chocolate lab that's not doing so well. And so the dog used to sleep in there because... Sweet. You had to rent an apartment because she wanted no, the bedroom no, belonged no, to the dog? No, to your daughter's no, dog? No, no. I'd have a thing or two to save my daughters that. if they picked the dog over that. their mother, but okay. I didn't say that. That's all right. I got you. I got you. All right. I'm just teasing. All right. So let me just understand this. He needs to pay for your move to Florida rather than your move to a different apartment in Yonkers. Yeah, and that's why and I said the And the lease let... was over when? And the 31st is when he moved out. But the problem... Well, then why would he pay your moving expenses? You were going to move anyway. You're... I had to move because of all this... No, stop! You don't have a right to the place on the 1st of August. That's not your place. Your lease was over. You had to move unless he gives you another lease. So we on what... Move... Stop it! On what theory does any human being who you no longer have a contractual obligation with because your lease is over have to pay your removing expenses? Where would that ever be right? No, I would, we would, we would not have moved. And you would have what? I would, I would have asked to renew the lease. And he could have what? Then he could have said no. And exactly. That would, that, exactly. That would have been a different story. So then he didn't violate a duty to you that would owe you $2,500 because he said, could have said, I don't like your glasses, I don't like your attitude, and I don't want you living here anymore. All right. I got it. Yeah. Now, you are calculating how much he owes you how? I take, for the rebate, a rent rebate for the deck. How? I take the total number of rooms, including the uh, deck. Yeah, I get a figure for each room. I multiply that out by nine. Because you figure the deck is as valuable in January as a kitchen. Sure. <laughs> sure. Were you seriously going to be out there with your park? I have barbecued in the winter time. <laughs> I've barbecued in a hurricane. <laughs> okay, torrential downpours, I barbecued. What about something different, which is the dust and the, and, and, well, I don't, it sounds like nothing was going on, but the dust, and because they ripped out completely the deck? Yes. Did you have a problem with dust? I have a problem with dust a yeah. little bit, yeah. That's a worth little something. Bit. All right, yeah. okay, thank you, folks. I think that's worth a rebate of $150 per month, and when I multiply that, eight months. All right. So um, based on what I think the rebate should be, uh, that, that, that a rather significant part of it wasn't there for all that time, I'm going to order you to repay him, not the amounts he's asking for, zero on the move. And on the rent rebate, I find that he's entitled to a $1,200 reduction in the rent. And therefore, I'm ordering you to pay him $1,200. That's my verdict. Good luck, folks. Thank you. All right, here comes uh, here comes the defendant here. What's your first comment on this outcome? Well, I don't think I don't think he's right because uh, it was not my fault. It cost me double to build that. I had to fire with, uh, the first contractor. It's not his job to get it built. It's your job. What about all the rules? Are you a little are you a little well, wired my, a little tight there? Well, my, my wife is a cleaning freak. Oh, she. 
Yeah. And she wants everything clean. And these people were not that clean, I believe. They were throwing everything all around, around the guy. You were just room. enforcing the rules of the boss then. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Smart man. All right, head, head right down this way. Thank okay, you. all right. Yes, sir. So, um, so you satisfied how this comes out now? Well, I would have liked the the true amount, the uh, the deck uh, amount, you know, which is twenty four hundred dollars. And you would have liked to move too, but you didn't get that either. Well, yeah, we wouldn't have moved if you didn't come up with all these rules. The rules, the right, this lease says the rules had to be posted or given to me in writing, and they never were. And uh, I don't think his wife is the clean freak because she never said a bad word to me. And my wife. Uh, she didn't she tell said, you three sheets. He did. No, he did. I'm telling you, that's the truth. Harvey. I got to say, uh, you kind of nailed it. That the point is, is that the damage, the, the damage has to be really significant in order to end the lease. Otherwise, um, it really does just become a reduction in rent.